Uh, in this video, I'll show you how to append worksheets within a workbook. Now, this is a small table, so it's fairly easy to do if you want to depend all these together, right? We want to put all these together. Maybe we'll create a separate tab, and you would have your ID, and then your year, and then basically copy and paste all of these into that sheet, right? But what? let's say that this is done on a recurring basis, you don't want to do this, this is more than, and you had files that were very long, maybe 10,000 rows, 50,000 rows, or you're doing it for superior and they like to keep it like this and they just want you to go and somehow pull this data in and they're going to constantly put in tabs for each year. So how can we do this to make it easier for you? Well, we can use Power Query to help append all these files together in a simple click. So what I need to do is I'll have a new worksheet here and just go into data, uh, get data, and we're going to browse for that file. So let me navigate to the workbook. We'll double click it to open it and it's going to open up in the Power Query Navigator. Now you may think that, oh, I can just select multiple items, select this one, this one, and this one, and append them all together, and that will be done with. But basically what we've done is we have not future-proofed it because when we run this query, all it's going to do is append these three tabs together. In the future, let's say we want to add a tab for 2010, 2011, 2012. We want to be able to do that and just with the click of a button, refresh it, and it'll automatically append it. So we don't want to do it this way. What we want to do is we want to query the whole folder. So I'm going to click on that, click to transform data, and it's going to bring up the editor. And in the editor, we're going to do some transformations. Uh, the rest of the items here are metadata. All I need is the first two columns. So press shift and data, right click, remove other columns. If I select in the blank cell here, you can see that for 2007, it shows all that data there, 2008, the same here in 2009. Right. What I need to do is expand this so it all shows up in one table now. So I'll click on the expansion icon and it's going to bring those in. I do not want to use the column name as a prefix. What it's going to do is it's going to say data.column1. I don't want that. So uncheck that. Click OK. So now here what I want to do is I want to have that first column with header or clear header information. So it's going to say ID. Right. So we, we're going to use that first row as a header. So that brings it in also need to get rid of these other ID columns. So I'll unfilter that, uncheck that, click OK. And the last step will be to rename this column. We'll call this year. Press Enter, click Close and Load. This will load into my worksheet here. And we can think, well, we're all done. We're finished, right? But we're not because maybe later on we want to add or append 2010 data here. I have a file here that is 2010, so I'm going to bring that up. So here I am with my files. This, this is the file that the Power Query is referencing, but let's say I had another file. I want to put 2010 data here. I'm going to add a sheet here. Let's call this one, oops, right click, delete that sheet. Double click, 2010, press enter. Let's copy this data in. Control C to copy, Control V to paste. Now we've got our data there, right? We've got 2010 data. I'm going to double click here to auto fit that column. Save this. And we'll minimize these now. And scroll down. And all I need to do now, I've added that worksheet in there, saved it. All I need to do is right click, refresh, and 2010 data will show up. And if we had 2011 data, 2012 data, that's all we need to do now. And then we've appended in all that information. So I've mentioned earlier that what if something's changed prior to that? What if something changed in this file? Maybe there was a mistake made and this particular, this first tab was not 2007, it was 2006. Press enter. Save that. What's going to happen? It's going to reference 2007 in our query here. And we want to future proof this just in case the first tab in there was renamed. If it's always going to be the first tab, but then it got renamed, we can kind of future-proof this 
by doing some adjustments. So I'm going to show you what happens when I rename that. Right click, refresh. We're going to get an error because it's looking for that reference 2007. Click OK. Double click it. Let's auto. Let's edit this. So here it looks like it ran successfully, but that's because it didn't run when we queried it. Let me refresh the preview and see what happens. Oh, okay. So this is where it still errors out. So if we start at the very beginning, there's no errors here. There's no errors here. That one's okay. That step is okay. This step. Ah, here we go. There's a step where we are referencing that 2007, and that's where the error first shows up. And so anything, anything after that is going to error out. So what I need to do is I probably need to remove this because I don't need this change type step. What this step is doing, whenever it says change type, it's just changing the data type. So if you have whole numbers, it's going to make that column whole numbers. If that column is supposed to be text, you're going to change it to text like we have here. This ID is text. Or if it's going to be currency, it changes the currency. Um, in essence, we don't really need this call, this step. So I'm going to delete that. Click delete, and that removes that step. And let's look at my other steps. So we have our promoted header, our filtered rows. We got that one. That's fine. And here we have our error. So I'm going to change the M code here. I'm going to bring up the advanced editor. It makes it a little bit easier to see all the steps when we have that. And so I need to change this to reflect any time that it sees the first column, whether it be 2007, 2006, whatever, it's going to replace that with the year in the header field. And the way that we can do that is we can use the mcode type table dot column column names. Let me see if I can find it here. Column names. Double click that. And the column name, I'm going to refer to the previous step. Uh, parentheses, open parentheses. The previous step is filtered rows. So I will copy this, that hash mark, all the way to the quotes. Control C to copy, put that in here, Control V to paste. So it's going to reference that previous step. Look at the table column names in the previous step. And which column do I want to look at? I want to look at the first column. So the way Power Query works is anything, any of the rows or the columns, it always starts with zero, not one. So the first column is going to be zero. I'm going to have to put that in curly brackets, zero. And when it looks at the first column, it's going to put in year as the text for that header field or the name. Click done and this should work hopefully. And now what it's done, it looked at that first column and changed it to year. Click close and load and now it's going to load successfully. If I went back and said, oh, maybe it's not 2006, it really is 2007, we'll go back into our source sheet here where I'm appending all the tabs. I'm going to say 2007. Press enter, click save, go back into the Power Query append sheet where I have my pens, right click, refresh, and now you see 2007 show up. Right, So that's kind of future proofing it. We, we future proofed it where something changed in the first tab, it will change the header information, no problem. And also we future proofed it where if we had subsequent years that we needed to add, 2010, 2011, 2012, we can just put it into the tab, refresh the query, and it will append that data. So that's the way that we can append uh, worksheets from a workbook in Excel using Power Query. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.